by Craft Podcast. I'm your host, Eunice Kim, and this is episode two. First of all, everyone and their moms started a podcast last week. <laughs> if I had known that everyone was going to do a podcast, I don't think I would have done it. So I'm kind of glad that I didn't know. <laughs> I was talking to one of my friends who's also a therapist and telling her, After I had launched that first episode, I was like, girl, everyone started a podcast this week. And, oh, and she was like, oh, it must feel like, you know, you got to the prom and like 10 other people are wearing the same dress. And I was like, yes, yes, that is exactly how it feels. And not only are they wearing the same dress, but they wore it better. Oh, so anyway. I was like, that's the perfect analogy to how it kind of felt. But you know what? Who cares what other people are wearing? Who cares what other people are doing? Um, I'm honestly super happy to be here. So if you commented, if you engaged with me in any way, gosh, thank you. Thank you so much. Today, I'm excited. I have a couple of finished objects to share with you, as well as some whips and some acquisitions, including a non-yarn acquisition that I'm actually quite excited about. So hang tight and let's get to it. The first finished object is my brownstone beanie. Da 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 da. Isn't she beautiful? man. I was actually quite sick this past week. Um, I sounded nasally in that first episode and I sound nasally now. Uh, But yes, this is the brownstone beanie. It was a really comforting knit to knit on because it's like mostly stockinette. Actually, yeah, I think it's stockinette all the way around. There's no ribbing on this. And it is such a fun and bright color. And yeah, it was really, it was really comfort in it for me. Can you see that? Hmm. This is a pattern by Tori Yu at Tori Knits NYC and the yarn is by LL Yarn Co. in the LL Sock. The colorway is Damn That's Bright Pasadena 2022. It, it, it was their special colorway for Stitches SoCal and isn't she beautiful? I really really love it a lot. This was recently released, and when I saw it, I just knew that I had to to grab the pattern. And it's great because it's double brimmed. Actually, is it triple brimmed? Because it's double brimmed here, but then you fold it up for like this extra snug layer. And the slouch is perfect. It's beautiful. And yeah, my first FO. The second finished object is my... Seaway Sweater by Ozetta, by Haley at Ozetta. Oh my gosh, I love, I love this pattern a lot. And I, and I'm so proud of myself. I think the all over, all over cabling is, um, this is like a first for me, but I, yeah, I, as I mentioned in my previous episode, I was going to reduce a lot of my test knitting this year, but this, Actually, let me show you something. Last year, I purchased this book. I was flirting with the idea of maybe dipping into designing this year. I don't know. I was just thinking about what I wanted to do in 2023. And yeah, I was like, hey, maybe I pay attention to the garments that I'm missing in my wardrobe and maybe I dabble in some design. Hmm. And I kid you not, the thing that I was most excited about while looking through this book was this cabling here called sand cables. I don't know if you can see that. I saw this and was like, oh my gosh, that's what I want. That's the sweater I want. I want this cabling pattern like all over. But as I sit down to kind of think about how I would construct this sweater, 
I gave up almost immediately. Shout out to all the designers out there because ooh, I don't even know where to get started and I want to do this sweater but I was kind of bummed out like okay this might not work but then Haley showed a picture of this new design that she was working on and it was this it was literally this now it's not exactly the same thing but it was pretty damn close so it was a no-brainer for me. I knew I wanted to make the sweater. I, I knew I was going to make it anyway. I think I even messaged Haley and was like, Haley, you've created the sweater of my dreams. And it doesn't even matter if you pick me to test. I just want to thank you for creating this pattern. And I'm going to knit it. I'm going to knit it this year. Whether it's as a tester or whether it's not as a tester, doesn't matter. I just want to make this. And maybe that's what I should use as my litmus test. For whether or not I want to test. Anyway, um, this sweater is made in the Ranger Merino DK in the color Chickadee. It's it's wonderful. It's nice and cozy. It is a non-super wash yarn that is unfortunately discontinued, but it blooms beautifully after blocking, and it's next to skin soft. Um, yeah, it just feels really nice and cozy, and I'm happy that there is still some cold weather ahead so that I can get a lot of wear out of this. Something to note about this pattern, or maybe it's just cable knitting in general, I noticed that it was very long. Like, this is my swatch here. And when I initially knit it up, it was kind of long like this, like long, long and narrow. I was a little nervous that I wasn't going to meet Gage. But I blocked it and I laid it out flat. I didn't pin it down, I just laid it out flat and let it completely dry and realized, oh, it kind of shrunk a little bit. It, or it got shorter and wider. Like it, the cables laid out flat. And I was like, oh, it was really interesting to learn that that's how cables behave. I mean, logically it makes sense. But it was a real learning experience for me because again, I've never done all over cables before. Then when I made this garment, I noticed similar things. I followed most of what Haley had written out in the pattern and the body especially. I was like, oof, as I was binding off, I was a little nervous it was gonna be too long. It sort of like hit my bum a little bit and I don't really like to wear sweaters that long, but I trusted the process. I, I, I remembered, ooh, when, when I swatched, it was a little long and you know, it got a little shorter so maybe it'll be okay and it, was. It shrunk a little bit. It got a little wider. The The cables really bloomed and opened up and yeah, the fit now is beautiful. I love it so much. I really, really like it. And I know last time I shared about the collar, how it wasn't sitting very well. Yeah. After blocking. Uh, it looks fine. I think it's fine. I'm not going to rip it back. I'm just gonna go back in and cut all of my ends that I've woven in before I blocked and I think we're good to go. Oh, sizing. Quick note about the size. This pattern calls for about five to nine and a half inches of positive ease. That's anywhere between 12 and a half to about 24 centimeters of positive ease. My bust measurement is 38 inches or about 98 centimeters, is that right? something like that. This pattern is graded so that each size that you make covers a wide range of measurements. Yeah, size one I think is like XX small to X small. Size two I think is small and, and medium. Three is large, extra large, so on and so forth. Like it's clustered together. I typically fall in between the medium and large sizes. For sweaters, things that I'm gonna wear over another layer perhaps, I like to size up. But for this one, I size down. I made the size SM, or I think it's the size two, instead of doing my typical MO, which is to size up. I did that because I really did not want to fall in like the 12 inch of positive ease category. Yeah, I just thought it would be like a like a blanket. It would just it'd be like a poncho. It would just, yeah, it would just be really, really large. So I ended up, I'm sizing down and I'm really really glad that I did. 
I think about three to four inches of positive ease is my sweet spot. I'm finding that I like how it fits. I like how it looks. Um, it's professional enough to where to work, um, but it's casual enough to go and run errands and stuff in them. So I think that's my sweet spot. I think that's what I want to do moving forward. But yeah, those are my two finished objects since last week. Next, let's talk about my wits. Four whips. Some are projects that I started a while back. Some are new. But I'll start with my newest cast on. After last week's episode, I realized, ah, I really think Sam needs another skiff sweater. And before the season is over, I think I want to make her another one. <laughs> so I did. This is my skiff version two. Da, 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 da. I decided this time to try and tackle three colors. I've never done that before. I really wanted to use this color here by Sorella. It's a oopsie yarn. It's like a lavender. I don't tend towards this color that much. But um, great thing about children's knits is that you can make a smaller garment. It doesn't require as much yarn. And I paired it with this color here. This one is by Euphoria Knits in her DK Frenzy. The colorway is Golden Apple. And then my third color is also a Sorella yarn. A Sorella Oopsie yarn. I was a little bit nervous about doing three colors at a time for color work, but I think I'm doing okay. If it's not perfect, that's all right. But I am finding that these three colors are like lovely together. It's super fun. I would never wear these colors, I don't think, but I think it'll be fine for Sam. There are some modifications that I made to the sweater. After working on this sweater previously, I knew that there were some things that I wanted to switch up. So some of the changes that I made was to the neckline. I cast on two sizes down. So the sweater is going to be six but the neckline I cast on for size two. And I did this because previously it was a little bit wide and I wanted it to come up a little bit. I also did a little bit more rounds of ribbing in there. I made the, the collar about four centimeters instead of the one and a half centimeters that the pattern calls for. Um, I think the previous gift was kind of like that too. Like the collar was about four centimeters and I liked it. So I wanted to continue to do that. And then the last modification I made was to add German short rows. Uh, the pattern itself does not have short row shaping. In the pattern, you do the collar and then you jump right into the color work. But I wanted to add short rows. The details of like how much I did and what I did is all found on my Ravelry page. So I'll link my projects page to this episode. You can go and find all of the modifications that I made for my second gift. Next is a project that was in a hibernation for a little bit, but I brought it back out because Samantha specifically requested a sweater without any sleeves. <laughs> This is my vest from the fluffiest set. It's a pattern by Hannah G. Knits. And the pattern has both a vest option and a cardigan option. So really, you're getting two patterns for the cost of one. She makes these amazing children's clothes that are, yeah, they're just really classy and um, classic pieces that I think we'll wear for a really long time. Yeah, and they're just beautiful. I grabbed this pattern um, because I had in stash this yarn here. The pattern calls for a boucle yarn. Um, it's designed for um, boucle. This is not. This is Katia's uh, Concept Pluma, and it's actually a cotton blend. So it's not wool, but it's nice and fluffy. It meets gauge. It has the same element of like floofy, 
comfy cozy but in our uh, climate I think this might be a little bit more appropriate and I am going to pair that with the Cascade 220 Superwash Merino and I think it's Olive Martini or something like that. Martini Olive perhaps? This one the colorway for this is Serpentine. So the pattern has you make the body of the cardigan or the vest and then you do the um, eye cording or the edges around um, the garment with a non-floofy yarn. I decided that I'm going to try to also modify this pattern and do ribbing instead. Um, the pattern has you do a button band as you work the body, but I kind of like how it sits. Instead of having it overlap, I think what I'm gonna do is just add a button band and I hope it goes okay because this is a v-neck. Yeah, I'm hopeful it'll work out. But Samantha straight up asked me for a vest this past week. So I was like, ah, okay, I will I will make I will I will continue working on this and hopefully finish it. Um, it'll be a great transitional piece as we're going into spring. I think she'll get a lot of wear out of it. I had her try it on and she didn't want to take it off. She kept like feeling it and she was like, oh, I love it. And she was like looking at herself in the mirror and it was really adorable. So I feel pretty motivated to finish this. Now, why did it go into hibernation? Well, it's because I realized that um, this yarn, while beautiful as a finished product, is kind of a doozy to work with. It hurts my wrists. Ah, the cotton content. Ugh, I'm realizing... It's not very kind on my wrists. Ay, and so I'm really bummed about that. I'm really bummed. Cotton is a great, or just like plant-based fiber, I think is a really great alternative for wool, especially given that it's warm here most of the year. But I'm gonna have to figure out what to do. If you guys know of really good cotton yarns that aren't really stiff, and that have been a pleasure to work with, please let me know. I need to find some. I'd love to hear what your suggestions are for that because I would like to continue knitting in the summer. But anyway, that is The Fluffiest Vest by Hannah Genitz. Number three, my third work in progress, is my Vertices Unite Shawl. I put this on hibernation for a little bit. But take a look at this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think this is the right side. Can you see this? I'm so close to being done, you guys. I really have no excuse for not finishing this up. I'm on the very last module. And this is a pattern by Stephen West. It's a modular uh, construction, meaning that you start with one section, and then you go to a different section, and then you almost piece it together. And... Um, you join as you go, and it creates this beautiful asymmetrical triangle shawl, and it's a wonderful length. It's so large, and I just imagine it'll be a beautiful shawl to have either lying around the house even as like home decor, or even to just wrap around. I don't know. I just think it's going to be lovely. I found this pattern through the Young Folk Knits podcast. Casey has... Um, her own Vertices Unite shawl, and it's gorgeous. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. It's beautiful, and I was like, mm, yeah, I need to have one of those. <laughs> so I grabbed some fingering yarn from my stash, five different colors. I can't tell you exactly what all of the colors are because some of them, it's like a deep dive into my stash, but I should just finish it. I really should. I'm so close, and this one will probably be a good transitional piece for me in the springtime to take with me to work, to just wrap around in the mornings um, during school drop-offs. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. I should really get on this. Last work in progress is actually not a knitting project. <laughs> I have been watching Natalie from Knitty Natty and her journey in through her granny, her granny stripe scrap, her Granny, scrap, her scrappy granny stripe blanket. Oh, 
this past month, so for the month of February, she was doing her scrappy granny square blanket, and I was inspired. Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady also has some scrappy granny square blankets on her on her hook. Ugh. Before I was a knitter, I was a crocheter. So my origins are with crochet. And I haven't touched my crochet hook in a while, but I couldn't help myself. I started making squares. This is the first time that I'm using fingering weight yarn to crochet. I've been crocheting for a very long time, but I have never made any garment or blanket or anything with fingering weight yarn, but I'm obsessed. This has been such a joy lately. And each little square is just, I don't know, it's just been giving me a lot of joy. And I've been finding myself, picking up my hook, wanting to work on it, and really curious about how my scrappy variegated yarns are going to work up in this square. Yeah, it's just been really wonderful. So the base of my color palette that I'm using is inspired by a tonal set, a tonal oopsie set that I got from Cirella Yarn. I don't know what collection it's from, but ugh, it's beautiful. The colors, I love Cirella. Like she's so good at having her audience connect with her yarns and oopsie sales are the perfect time to get your hands on some. I'm also adding in some variegated scraps and stuff and it's just been really delightful. Um, I did some calculations and it looks like I'm gonna need about 150 squares. Hmm. So this might be a while, <laughs> but you know, I'm excited about it and I think it'll be worth it. Yeah. Whew. Last but not least, are my acquisitions. Yeah. Last week was my birthday and Sam, my friend from A Needle and Yarn Co., she surprised me with, with a gift of yarn, like the best gift ever. And it was this. Juniper Moon Farms Patagonia Organic Merino in the best color ever. It's a uh, acorn. I love a good mustard yellow. This brownie, yellowy, earthy, mm, mm, mm. it's my favorite. It's my favorite color ever and she knows me so well. She got me four of these and as soon as I held it, I was like, oh, I know exactly what I'm gonna do with this. It is a non-superwash yarn, sport weight, 100% wool. I have been eyeing Hannah's can be sweater since she started working on it. It is beautiful. I never would have guessed that it would look that good just by looking at the pattern photos. Is that mean to say that? Oof. But I have to tell you, Hannah's version is what sold me on the sweater. And Hannah's version is what made me say, I need one of those. I really, really want one. That's what this is gonna become. It's perfect. The pattern calls for a worsted weight yarn, but I think Hannah used a sport weight. And she said that she was able to meet gauge. She said that it was more appropriate for her climate. And I was like, yeah, mine too. <laughs> so I swatched right away. I even blocked it. And this is my, um, my swatch for the Canby sweater. And I think I met gauge. Yeah, I think it's ready to cast on. It's a beautiful, I don't know. It's sticky. I think the texture is going to come out really well. <sighs> I think it's going to be really good. So yeah, my first acquisition. Mm, so good. Next is my big old order from Knitting for Olive. Recently, Knitting for Olive did a fundraiser to raise money and awareness for the events that are going on in Ukraine. They did that last year and I was really thankful to be able to participate and I'm really glad that I was able to participate in that this year as well. I thought great cause, great yarn, great opportunity. So I got a bunch of yarn. 
like a lot. I think I got 24 balls total <laughs> of the Merino. I've never worked with their, their Merino, but I've heard good things about it. And like I said, I can't really use cotton yarn, so I'm wondering if this Merino in the fingering weight will be a great way for me to find an alternative for the summer, like for tanks and stuff. Ugh, we'll see. But I got it in four different colors. Uh, this one is the Dusty Rose. I also got Plum Clay. Next, I got the Dusty Sea Green, which might be my favorite, actually. Last, I got the Slate Green, which, uh, which is like a heathered dark green and it's really beautiful. I don't know if you can tell but there's a bit of like yellow in here too. It's just so gorgeous. I am not a hundred percent sure what I'm going to be doing with all of this but I have a t-shirt quantity for each of these colors. Um, I know I want to make a Miles tee again. There's a tank that I'm looking at. I think it's called the Tip Top Tank. I also want to make an outline tee. So that's another one I'm thinking about. And there's also the Farnham sweater. That's been looking really, really good. But I'm really excited to try their merino for the first time. I've tried their cotton merino and that, even that was a little bit rough on my wrists. But the merino merino, I'm hoping will be a good solution. My very last acquisition. It's not a yarn, but I'm still equally super, super excited about it. Let me show you. Mm. Can you see what this is? Can you even tell? It's kind of large. I got a drying rack. It really helps dry the sweater so fast. Like this? I bound off and I blocked last night and it was dry this morning. I didn't know if it would be worth it or not, but I looked it up because my sweaters were just having a really hard time drying and it wasn't that expensive. I thought it would be worth it. And what's really cool about this one is that it's stackable. So you can lay out your knits and you can stack them on top of each other and it doesn't take up that much room. The best part about it, I think, is that it folds in half. Genius, right? It folds in half and it kind of tucks away and so I, I slide it under my little cabinet that I have and it's perfect. It's out of sight and I can pull it out when I need it. Yeah, I think it was a really good choice. Anyway, that's all I have for us today. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that today you'll have some moments of peace that you'll be able to experience some joy today and yeah i'll see you guys next time bye